Eric, can you talk a little bit about the role of women in the Dora Rebellion? Women played a significant role uh, in Thomas Wilson Dora's attempt at constitutional reform in Rhode Island between 1841 and 1845. Women also played a significant role in opposing Dora's efforts to um, alter and abolish Rhode Island's form of government. Um, the recent update to the Dora Rebellion Project website focuses in on women who were deeply connected to the Rhode Island Suffrage Association and indeed personally to Thomas Wilson Dorr. Uh, we have uploaded uh, a series of letters from the Dorr correspondence at the John Hay Library at Brown University that highlight the activism of women um, who worked tirelessly on behalf of Dorr in terms of promoting um, his agenda in regards to suffrage extension and constitutional reform. Women also worked tirelessly in the wake of Dorr's failed attempt um, to alter Rhode Island's form of government in June of 1842. Women worked for the release of Dorrite prisoners. Um, they were very much connected to um, aiding them in prison and securing their release from prison. They formed associations. It was a Ladies' Free Suffrage Association, a Ladies' Benevolent Suffrage Association as well. It was a multitude of organizations that women uh, became uh, connected to. They were very active in terms of fundraising, in terms of keeping Doors' agenda alive while many of his followers were in prison. Women worked um, tirelessly throughout 1842 and 1843 to keep the, the cause alive. They were in communication with Doors while he was in exile in New Hampshire. Indeed, when Doors returned uh, to uh, Providence, in the fall of 1843, women were there to greet him. Uh, he went, uh, of course, he went on to uh, trial in Newport. He was tried and convicted for treason against the state of Rhode Island and then subsequently imprisoned um, in this new state prison in Providence on the Cove in Providence. And women, uh, again, tried to keep his cause of li alive. Uh, Catherine Williams in particular worked uh, behind the scenes to ensure that Dorr's mother, Lydia, uh, would receive correspondence uh, from her son as her son sat in prison. Um, Catherine Williams, Abby Lord, Anne Parland, Francis Whipple Green worked um, throughout 1844 and into 1845 to secure Dorr's release from prison. These letters are all represented on this new update to the Dory Rebellion Project website. They really show an um, often neglected period of antebellum history, that is women who were very much connected to the Democratic Party. These were not abolitionist women. All too often our focus in on women in the antebellum period are we look at women who were working tirelessly in the side of abolition and temperance and were connected somewhat to the Whig Party. This is indeed a different group of women in Rhode Island. And of course their efforts, uh, they were very vocal, they were very political. And all of this predates the, the convention in 1848 in Seneca Falls by four or five years. So it's a significant period for students and teachers to dive into through these letters, through the head notes, through a contextual essay that accompanies this. And they also can look at the very close relationship Dor had with his mother, Lydia, while in prison on another part of the website.